I think it's going to change slowly, but I think having the conversations is obviously the big first step. <laughs> Having been an acting child, well, honestly, I don't really know anything different. Um, so it's a bit sort of hard to, to have any objectivity about what my life would have been like otherwise. But I mean, I had some extraordinary experiences and got to work with some of the most extraordinary actors and directors and cinematographers and artists and all kinds of fields that at the time I'm sure I was completely ungrateful for. But, um, <laughs> but it was a strange but incredibly privileged childhood and one that, you know, I'm not sure I'd choose for my kids, but um, but I, I feel very lucky and very blessed. That Where's your mother? Where's she gone? <laughs> Jane is one of the greatest sort of visionary female auteurs of our time, um, who I had the absolute pleasure of obviously getting to learn from on my very first acting job ever when I was only nine years old, and who I basically owe having an entire career to. So Jane, thank you very much. For the best performance by an actress in a supporting role, the Oscar goes to Anna Paquin, the piano. favorite scene in True Blood. So there is a scene where Suki faces off with a female werewolf called Debbie Pell because she thinks I'm trying to take her man. And we have a, I mean, full on knockdown, drag out, smashing each other in the head with chairs, proper, proper fight. And it was a female director, this amazing woman, Leslie Lee Gladder, who does a whole bunch of Homeland. And it was a female writer, and it was just so much kind of like woman power, and just all of us feeling so tough and so like, you know, in our in ourselves and our energy and in our sort of confidence as women. And it was just such a cool day. <laughs> Being an actress during the Me Too era, there's obviously a lot of us who have had experiences that in retrospect, we no longer think of the things as we need to brush off and laugh at, which is generally how I think most, a lot of women who I know are like, when you sort of start you know, talking about it, you're like, yeah, but it wasn't that big of a deal. It's kind of been interesting to suddenly be told, actually, you're allowed to have not thought that was okay. That was your place of employment. Nobody had a right to treat you like that. And honestly, I don't, I think it's gonna change slowly, but I think having the conversations is obviously the big first step. It certainly makes me less concerned about younger kids when they're like, oh, I wanna be an actress when, I'm, when I grow up. It kind of gives me less of a sort of knot in my stomach where I'm like, well, actually, Maybe you're going to come into this business in a time and a way where you will be taken care of better on set and you will not be subjected to some of the things that some of us were subjected to. It's exciting, I guess, to be part of a, a time where, where I think really positive change at least has the potential to happen. I don't know, I don't know if it's going to mean that every actor, actress on every set every crew member is always going to feel taken care of, but at least it's a conversation that's, that's happening out loud, finally. <laughs> I'm currently working um, on the show uh, The Affair, which is on Showtime, and both, uh, both HBO and Showtime have availed themselves of a new job called an intimacy coordinator whose job it is to make sure every single person has the conversation, not just the nudity writer, not just your lawyer saying, oh, she's comfortable showing this, but like, is this okay? Are you okay? Is it okay if he puts his hand here and comes in and steps in and has very specific conversations and it gives you another person that, you know, because you, you don't want to disappoint the people you're working for, 
but also sometimes I think that's how people get into situations where they go home feeling like, I didn't want to do that. It's not working for me. What the fuck do you want? You are one sick bitch. Again, there's sort of concrete things like that or being more clear up front about like, who is the person to call? Because I think also a lot of people don't want to rock the boat and don't know where to go.